some some are some faculty members some are faculty members some are students some phd student or those who have presented submitted the this conference right. paper they will be our audience I'll try to make the material accessible even for non-medical. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And so you are based right now where in uh, in, uh, Jaipur. Jaipur? in Jaipur, Rajasthan, sir. Jaipur. Uh -huh. Jaipur Rajasthan, sir. Good morning, Leo. How are you? Hi, good morning. How are you doing? Just say Dr. Opi Verma. Oh, hi. How are you? Oh, fine, sir. So, we will start in five minutes, sir. No problem. No problem. Thank you for the invitation. Okay, sir. So, I understand it's mostly computer science people? Yes, audience. yes, yes. Yes, Professor, oh? yes. Yes, okay. most of the papers are from the background of computer science, and uh, other are from the belonging to the optimization field. Okay, okay. Hmm. So, they know, they've heard about deep learning a little bit, maybe? Sure, sure, sir, sure, sure. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes. So, so, I can assume they have at least heard about that. Yes, CNN, JNN, they know okay. how they work, you know, no. Mm -hmm. My student is also working on this area, sir. Object you detection are working and on tracking. This, sir. Yeah, object uh -huh. detection and tracking using the MLD algorithm. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Professor, shall we start? Because most of the uh, viewers are on, on, uh, on the YouTube channel also. Because we are streaming okay. the same on the YouTube channel also, right? So, shall we start, if you permit? Uh, yes, let me... Um, let then... me introduce you for yourself first, then... Sure. Yeah. I'll, I'll just... Uh, hmm. The screen... Yeah. So, share. audience, uh, we have Professor Lukovic from the... School of Computer Science and Engineering at the Hebrew University of Jerusalem, Israel. He is the founder and director of the Computer Added Surgery and Medical Image Processing, CASMIP Lab. Professor Jokovic is a fellow of the IEEE, ASME, MICCAI societies, 
is a receptionist of the 2010 Marus E. Muller Award of the Excellence in Computer Assisted Surgery by the International Society of Computer Aided Orthopedic Surgery in and 2007 KE Innovation Award. He has published more than 250 technical works, including conference and journal papers, book chapters, and editorials. He is a member of the board of the directors and Mikai and Chaos CAOS internal societies and has served on numerous related program committees. He is on the editorial boards of the six journals, including Medical Image Analysis, International Journal of Computer Added Surgery, Computer Added Surgery, and Nature Scientific Reports. He is also the co chair of the Mikai 2020 conference in Lima, Peru. So now we are handing the session to the Leo. So Leo, please. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, thank you very much, uh, Professor Agarwal. Do you see me, hear me, and see my slides okay? Yes? Yes, yes, sir. Okay, okay, thank you very much. <clears throat> thank you very much uh, for the kind uh, invitation. Uh, I'm very happy to be here with you uh, virtually. Uh, greetings from Israel, from Jerusalem, where I'm here now. Um, <clears throat> The topic of uh, today's uh, lecture has to do with computer science and medicine. And specifically, we're gonna talk about radiology, the interpretation of uh, medical images. And we're gonna talk about uh, uh, methods for deep learning, which I'm sure uh, most of you have heard about. So what is uh, <coughs> um, the uh, setup? Uh, we're talking about uh, radiology, as I said, uh, the science of uh, imaging in medicine. And we're going to uh, focus on the goal of extracting qualitative and quantitative information from me medical images uh, for the purpose of clinical reporting and clinical decision making. What you see here in the image is uh, a, a CT, a computed tomography image of the <coughs> area of the pelvis and what you see in red is uh, called the sacroiliac joint and the goal of uh, <clears throat> of this is to detect the joint and see uh, uh, if it is uh, in a good condition or not this would be the diagnosis the second image that you see here is a 3d reconstruction of uh, tumors in the liver uh, you see in red uh, the blood vessels you see in green the liver masses and you see uh, the liver as well. And the purpose of this image is to help uh, clinicians decide whether the uh, tumors can be operated surgically, they can be removed, or if they need to be uh, treated with other means. And uh, similarly, uh, the images are used not only for diagnosis, but also for surgical planning. For example, here we see an MRI image of a brain tumor which is going to be radiated. And the goal, what you see here in blue, is the tumor, the segmentation of the tumor. And the goal is to do this planning. So this is what we're going to be talking about today. <clears throat> what are the, why is uh, computer support needed in clinical radiology? Well, <clears throat> there are several factors. First of all, the number of patients obviously increases uh, more rapidly than the number of clinicians. Uh, so that causes, of course, a manpower shortage. Uh, you see here the clinician overwhelmed with many images. Uh, and of course, there is a raising cost of the imaging itself. Each one of these scans consists of several hundred slices, which each one is a 2D grayscale image, which a clinician has to interpret and decide, make a decision or make a plan about the treatment. Uh, also, because of the treatment complexity and diversity, uh, we see that the specialization uh, goes up. Uh, uh, you need more specialized uh, uh, and more specific uh, uh, diagnosis and interpretations of these images. Now, this is on the clinical side. On the technical side, we of course have now uh, a big data ubiquity, meaning that uh, the um, amounts the images can be readily available, uh, of course, with the permission of the hospitals and clinicians. Uh, and we have amazing computer power and networking. I wouldn't be 
speaking to you if we didn't have that. So the issue of uh, transmitting the images and, and computing with these images is not an issue anymore. And the focus of today is the new AI technologies, artificial intelligence. And the goal is not necessarily never to replace the clinician, but really to help automate the workflow uh, of the clinician in making these decisions. So this is the focus of today's talk. Uh, just to give you a perspective of uh, what is the goal. Uh, let's take two parameters. The amount of time it takes a radiologist to uh, make a diagnosis or to make a plan. And what is the accuracy of this diagnosis? Meaning uh, how certain it is and uh, uh, what is its quality. And of course, you never you can never reach 100% accuracy, but there is a certain accuracy above which the clinical requirement, for example, the, uh, for the sacroiliitic joint that we saw before, the gap between the, the two bones is determines uh, whether uh, there is a need of treatment or not. And this gap can be measured to plus minus uh, one or two millimeters, and that's okay. And that's the clinical requirement. Now, what we observe is that in current practice, because most of these measurements and analysis are done manually, uh, uh, and because there is such a shortage of time for the radiologist, uh, you you, it is not always the case that uh, the accuracy is above what is needed for the clinical requirement, and it takes a while. So the goal of the technologies that we are developing, and many others around the world, is to move uh, the curve towards the left, meaning you want to both reduce the time of the radiologist and improve the accuracy, but not necessarily make the time zero, meaning completely automatic. So it's a decision support system. And this, the third factor, which is important, is the observer variability, meaning you're familiar with the case that you go to one clinician, uh, he or she makes a measurement, you do an, to another clinician, there is another measurement or decision, and there's a discrepancy between the two of them. And this is called the observer variability, sometimes because of the inaccuracy of the measurement and sometimes because of the uncertainty of the case. And this is also uh, something that we would be interested in reducing. So if I draw the tolerance band between uh, what happens, you have a significant observer variability, which is most of the time unknown. You do not know what is the uncertainty. Um, and the goal then is to also reduce this observer variability. It's always going to be present, but to quantify and to reduce it. If you manage to achieve these three things, uh, improve the accuracy, reduce the variability, and uh, uh, shorten the radiologist time needed for performing the task, this is going to lead to better treatment for the patients, and this is the ultimate goal. So. This is what we're talking about. And of course, we have this uh, technology, which is uh, by now five or six years old, which is deep learning, uh, which has really uh, been uh, used uh, to address this problem, which is the method of choice. Uh, you see a lot of interest in not only in the technical community, but in the AI community, uh, uh, a lot of buzz, uh, both in the medical community about uh, interested about deep learning uh, companies uh, at the big uh, 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 show and so on. So it, some even go as far as saying is artificial intelligence the doom of radiology. Of course, this is not the case. Uh, we're never going to replace uh, the clinicians. At least this is certainly not the goal. However, AI might replace those radiologists that do not use AI. So it's really the use of the technology which is of interest to us. Okay. Now, let's go a little bit more into this uh, task. What is needed? We have to bridge the gap between the technical side, which is what we as engineers do, and what the clinicians need. Okay. So let's take an example of a CT. This is a CT of part of the lungs, what you see here. Uh, you see the ribs and you see here a mass in the middle, that's the tumor. What are you interested in in terms of the 
radiological task. You want detection to know that there is a tumor, identification, uh, meaning uh, where it is and uh, what type of tumor it is, if it's possible, and segmentation, meaning you want to isolate and measure its volume, because if you want to follow up uh, for time, you need to compare those volumes. Now, clinically, how does this translate? Triage, meaning uh, uh, you get a patient, how important, how urgent it is to take this, if instead of a tumor, this is a blood clot, for example, you need to react quickly. Uh, incidental findings, meaning uh, you did a scan and you were looking for fracture, but uh, you also see a tumor, meaning you have to uh, report it. So you're, you found something which is not what you were looking for, but it is of clinical importance. Volumetry means you measure the volume, as I said, because the volume is, is a key parameter for a number of clinical decisions, and you want to be able to follow up. So, for example, we have this along tumor. Segmentation means you isolate the boundaries and determine which voxels, the unities of volume, are there. And then uh, you uh, automatically compute you say this is a long tumor, the volume is 22 cc, and compared to what it looked like uh, several months ago, you see that there is a disease progression. So you see the gap and how to bridge it between the technical tasks that we do and the clinical tasks, how they deport. So classification, uh, a voxel is a unit of volume, in, like a pixel uh, in a CT or MRI scan. It's a fundamental uh, task because to, for example, segment, you have to isolate which voxels belong to the tumor and so on. So classification is really at the center of many of these tasks that I described here. And for these, you need to uh, build a model. What is a model? It's a set of features or parameters and the relationships between them. So. Let's think about the three models uh, that you can use to perform this task. Uh, if you do manual modeling, like we used to do in the past, you identify the features, for example, the intensity, the texture, the shape, the location. How do we know that this is a lung tumor? Uh, well, we know it because it goes inside the lung and it has gray values that are different than those of the ones surrounding it and a certain texture. And those relationships you also encode manually, and then you go and write a program to be able to detect those. If you use machine learning techniques, uh, you define what the features are, intensity, texture, shape, you do this manually, but then you use statistical methods to derive the uh, relations between them, uh, regression, uh, single value decomposition, and so on and so forth. Now, if you use deep learning techniques, uh, in theory, everything is automatic. Uh, you bring enough examples and the network is able to derive the features, which is implicit, and the relationships. And this is the big appeal of deep learning. However, there is a big uh, axiom that says that there is no free lunch, uh, because it sounds like with deep learning, you can solve the problem uh, if you have enough examples. But this is really not the case. It presents new challenges. The type and effort and size of data is required is different. And the effort by engineers and clinicians is very different. OK, uh, <clears throat> the big difference, of course, is that you need a lot of annotations. Uh, you've seen this uh, having a great success in uh, uh, face recognition, uh, uh, speech recognition. But the issue is that you need hundreds of thousands of examples to train the network to do this properly. And this is simply not available. Uh, there are hundreds of thousands of scans, but there are no annotations. There are very few, if any, annotations. The radiologists don't do these annotations routinely. So <clears throat> in fact, you are lacking the most important component of deep learning, which is the annotation. So this is the focus of this talk. How can you uh, still train and use deep networks without having hundreds of thousands of high quality annotations? And when we talk about annotations, we're talking about the annotator expertise. 
because any one of us can annotate a car, a face, a hand, but few of us, if any, can annotate a fracture or a tumor, small tumor, or determine what type of tumor it is. You need a clinician, so of course this is restricted. The time budget, because this is time consuming, the quality, the distribution, and the observer variability. Let me just uh, uh, talk a little bit about each one of those. After all, you, uh, if you take a certain disease, let's say a lung tumors, there's a certain distribution of how these tumors look in the image. And uh, uh, a very common effect is what is what's called the long dinosaur tail. If you plot the type of case versus how frequent it is. So you see a tumor, it looks homogeneous, it more or less has a, a certain set of uh, grayscale values. Uh, and you plot this, you will see that most of the common cases fall within uh, uh, a certain band. Uh, and the vast majority of these cases that you're going to use to train your network are going to fall here. But, and then you're going to get good performance. However, you're also going to get rare cases. And rare cases are the norm in medicine. It's very unlikely that you have seen these cases in the training set. And this is the norm. You cannot say, OK, I have not seen this case, so I cannot give uh, any help for this patient. Uh, so you need to invent some uh, framework that allows you to recognize and identify the rare cases and ask for help from the radiologist when this is the case. So remember, we're not looking at a fully automatic uh, a system, we're looking at a system which is able to do quite well for the vast majority of cases and knows how to identify when a case is rare and requires human intervention. Okay, so let me show you an example of what the observer variability means. What you see here is the a lung tumor. Okay, you see in black the lung, you see the ribs in white and it's upside down so we can see it better. And this is what you see here inside the yellow uh, circle is the tumor. So what is the ground truth? What is the truth? Of course, you cannot extract the tumor and measure it. So you have to ask a set of radiologists to delineate it. This is what we did here. We asked a set of uh, radiologists at the radiology department here in Jerusalem to delineate this tumor. And this is the result. What you see here is each one of these, uh, each one of these boundaries corresponds to one radiologist, and this is manual annotation. And from a study we did, you can see that there is a large variability. Meaning, if you measure the volume, there's going to be a significant difference, and you have to account for this difference because this is what sets the clinical goal. Okay. So the, the variability is by structure, by case, by the type of observer. But the good news is that you can quantify and estimate. In engineering, we're very used to having an uncertainty or an error margin. In this case, it's not error. It's simply uncertainty because the boundaries are not certain. So <clears throat> uh, this is something very important. So what are the bottlenecks for developing and having AI in radiology. Uh, what it requires, first of all, a large collection of representative data sets, let's say for segmentation, like I showed you, between 1,000 and 5,000 cases with segmentations, manual segmentation. So we're talking about if there are about uh, 100, between 100 and 200 slices per study, we're talking about a very large number of uh, uh, slices. And if you're doing classification, binary classification, for example, benign or malign tumor, or just identification, you're going to need even more of those. And those are the annotations are not available. So uh, from experience in many projects, I can tell you that the manual expert annotation takes uh, for these tapes about at least a thousand hours of radiologists for the initial deployment of a system, plus another thousand hours for robustness and coverage. And remember, these are practicing people. Their day job is to help people not to annotate. Uh, so this is a problem. 
you have to uh, do a custom development of the solution for thousands, for hundreds of organs and structures. So if today I do something for lung tumors, and I want now to treat liver tumors because they look different and appear in a different part of the body, you're going to have to start from scratch. So you're going to have to do one of these for each pathology. There are thousands of pathologies, literally hundreds of uh, 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 several tens of organs, large organs, but there are many, many pathologies. And this really leads to what's called narrow AI. If you think about a RAD app, a radiology application, you need one for each. So this is a very lengthy and costly development. You have a great tool, but it's very hard to get the data to train it, okay? So think about the number of specialties that you have world, uh, uh, in medicine. And think about all the modalities, computer tomography, magnetic resonance. I didn't even st speak about x-rays, ultrasound. And then you're going to be able to develop one tiny solution for one specific type of tumor, one specific type of imaging, and one specific type. And you see this matrix. It's, uh, it's not only 2D, it's 3D or more. So it's going to take a lot of effort and a lot of time to even develop something for very few of those. It's not cost effective for the vast majority of the common conditions. Uh, uh, you will see that uh, the low hanging fruits, meaning the 10 to 20 conditions which are most critical and important and has the largest volume, uh, 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 institutes and companies will develop solutions for those but many of these other blocks are going to remain empty there's not going to be a, a, a solution for them for the simple reason that it's very expensive to develop that there are new methods for doing transfer learning one-shot image classification but uh, these are uh, still not uh, at the performance in which this can be done so the idea to address this problem is to involve the radiologists. It's called bootstrapping radiology, meaning you collect and annotate a few scans, you develop and improve the model, you develop and validate it, and then you ask the help of the radiologists uh, to improve the system and to make the decision when the system cannot recognize that it's, uh, it, it cannot make uh, a decision. So. What is the advantage of the radiologists in the loop? What I'm arguing is this is essential. You cannot develop these systems without having an involved radiologist into this process. Uh, you want to provide useful results. You want to optimize the radiologist time and to have to do the software impairment improvement on the go. Okay, so <clears throat> you're going to train a network. I'm going to very uh, uh, soon uh, use an example of uh, MRI of fetuses, fetal MRI. So you have uh, uh, here a set of annotations, what you see here in red, the fetus, and you can have a large quantity of low quality and a limited, quali a limited number of uh, uh, high quality ones. What does it mean high quality? It's a segmentation like here that has been validated, approved by two independent experts. They agree that this is correct. And here at the bottom of this pyramid, you would see many annotations which are generated by a network, because as I said, the scans exist, the annotations don't. So you can run a network, you can get many, many annotations, but then somebody has to look at them and determine whether they're correct or make corrections. So this creates a certain pyramid. Okay, so you're going to start with lower mixed quality annotations. You're going to train your network and you're not going to get great results. You're going to get some results. Okay, but the idea is that with the use of the radiologist, you want to validate and correct. Validate means those who are correct, you approve them. Those who need correction, there is a small correction. And then you're going to obtain, <coughs> move this to the top of the pyramid to obtain high quality uh, sets. Then you're going to train your network. And basically what you want to do is to optimize the amount of time. So because the radiologist time is ex 
expensive, you want to only ask for the questions or ask for the corrections when it's necessary. Okay, so we've been so this is uh, the setup and the introduction of the problem. Uh, in my lab, we have been uh, working on this type of problems. For example, one of the projects which I'll describe today is the uh, uh, analysis of fetal development in uh, 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 magnetic resonance images, MRI. We also do follow up of tumors in the liver and lungs in CT and brain MRI, and also deal with uh, 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 images of the eye. Uh, I'm not going to talk about that. So. I'm just going to choose the first example, MRI-based fetal development evaluation, and I'm going to tell you in practical terms, how do we go about this bootstrapping technology? So <clears throat> you probably know that uh, a pregnant women uh, require monitoring throughout the pregnancy, and this is usually done with ultrasound. In most cases, this is sufficient. However, in a few number of cases uh, in Israel, about one to two percent of the pregnancies uh, uh, in the rest of the world, a little bit less, but this will come. It is necessary to do an MRI scan. Why do an MRI scan? For the simple reason that the MRI scan is a much higher quality and allows you to see the structures inside the brain. In the ultrasound, you cannot do that, number one. Number two, if you want to quantify the precise volume of the fetus, it's very hard to do in ultrasound or you need linear measurements because you do not see the entire body. OK, this is an example of a, an MRI. This is the sagittal slices of the MRI. OK, and you see the brain and the fetus is upside down because the fetus can be nearly in any position. And what is the goal? Once these images have been acquired, the interpretation is the following. You want to do a segmentation of the fetal body, okay? And you want to do a segmentation of the fetal brain. You see here the slices and the 3D images, and also the placenta, because the placenta is the uh, uh, part of the body that uh, provides uh, uh, nutrients to the fetus. So, Based on their volumes and their morphology, the shape and different measurements, you can basically assess the health of the uh, fetus. Uh, for example, you can measure brain symmetry, uh, fetal brain symmetry, lack of symmetry is an indication of a, 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 an impending disease. Sulcation means the number of uh, uh, concavities in the brain. And you can do a variety of linear measurements that determine whether the uh, fetus is growing uh, pro uh, properly or not. So <clears throat> the idea then is that uh, we use these tools to provide a quantitative report, uh, uh, which is generated automatically <clears throat> based on the MRI uh, done if a radiologist does this manually, she will have to spend at least one or two hours trying to figure these numbers out. Um, if you use an automatic system, then the measurements are produced automatically. And what is the clinical meaning of this? <clears throat> you have here a gestation curves. Uh, in the lower, in the horizontal axis, you see uh, the, uh, uh, the uh, <clears throat> pregnancy week, the, the age in weeks of the fetus and the volume. And in these curves, if you find that the fetus volume falls in this category, it means that it's in the lower 10th percentile. The radiologist can then uh, interpret this as having what's called a growth restriction, meaning that the fetus is having trouble and requires some intervention. Uh, and this is the purpose. So. <clears throat> The question is, how do you build such a system? So at the initial phase, you're going to have to ask the clinician to annotate this uh, manually, uh, five to 10 uh, for each structure, the brain, the body, the placenta. And you're going to train a, a network with for each type of structure. Now you're going to ask me, how can you train a network with so few 
data sets. I'll show you how to do that uh, because we have a number of slices. So in fact, you will have about 500 slices between five and a thousand slices that are annotated. You're gonna train the network. The network is gonna produce some results. Some of them are not gonna be correct. They're not gonna be great but you're gonna ask a radiologist to make corrections. Now, we're gonna learn the, collect the corrections. So the idea is that as the radiologist makes the correction, you will record the corrections that were made and train a network to perform those corrections on the following step. I'll, I'll show you how this is. Once the purpose of this is going to be to generate additional uh, 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 improve the, uh, the quality of the annotations and generate additional ones. You're going to retrain the network for, to do that. And now the network is going to start performing fairly. And then uh, you will want to uh, 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 estimate and uh, 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 correct these errors in a semi-automatic fashion and prioritize which ones are important to do. So let me show you an example software network. Here's an example of a network that was trained on eight scans, meaning about uh, uh, 300 slice, annotated slices. And then uh, uh, the new scan comes in, you have an initial segmentation with this network, and uh, uh, the radiologist is gonna perform manual corrections on the online phase. You see here in red some of these manual corrections. And a network is going to be updated. And then the next slices, because remember in a CT, in an MRI, there is a sequence of slices. I'm going to automatically correct the following one. So let's say that slice N has this segmentation. You hear, you see here the uh, body of the fetus. And you see that there are errors. This is not part of the feature in the lower right part. And the upper right one has right. This is what is the result of the manual correction, uh, a few minutes. And then the network is going to propagate, is going to learn these corrections and propagate it to the next slice. And the next slice still contains some errors, but you see that there are fewer errors. The lower right side of the image has a much smaller area and the upper side looks better. So it's not perfect, but it is going to require less time to correct. So this is uh, how this helps. Uh, uh, let's say you take two radiologists and you ask them to annotate this. Uh, this is in the horizontal axis, the amount of time. The vertical axis, it's called the volume overlap difference, which is what is the volume difference with the ground truth. Um, at the beginning, uh, the difference is 100% because you have no annotations. As the time progresses and they annotate one slice after the other, after about more than an hour, you will get the annotation and the difference between the two manual annotations is about 10%. So the volume difference, that's the observer variability. If you use the network and the network that was trained with few examples, you will start with an error of about 35%. And then the manual annotation <coughs> is going to bring you to more or less the same accuracy, about 10% difference, in about 55 minutes. So you did not gain much. There is too much to correct. So it doesn't, it's not interesting. However, if you use the method that I described before, you initialize and you learn the corrections, you can perform this task in about eight minutes. So the, 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 chance, the change is dramatic. And the accuracy is very similar. So basically, you can do many more corrections like this. Okay, So you have the same observer variability. Now, once you use this method, you train the network. Now you can train the network with more examples. And they do relatively well on these scans. However, of course, they're not going to do well in the cases that the network has not seen. So you want to extend the coverage. The only way to extend the coverage is to now process hundreds of scans automatically. But then the problem is how do you validate them? Because you don't want to use scans which have poor results. And there are too many slices to inspect every single one of them. So what's the idea? You estimate the uncertainty of the network and then prioritize. 
Okay, you say, I want uh, the time, you will correct 10% of the slices. Which 10%? The 10% that has most errors and the network is most uncertain. Okay, so this is an example of how this uncertainty estimation might work. You have, a, a, this is the fetal brain. What you see here in the left side is an error. It's outside the brain. Uh, this is, is, is shown here in uh, uh, blue. And uh, uh, you see that there are small bands up here. Those are uncertainty, so that's legitimate. There's no need to correct that. But this is really an error, and that has to be corrected. The other one is the variability. So we have a, a, a methodology uh, that uses prediction time augmentation with a 3D unit. Uh, you, you do the augmentations and predict uh, where, <coughs> with the variability between the predicted images, where the error can be. And in this case, you see that there's no segmentation error. Okay, we have another network, which is based on the 3D unit, which is capable of propagating uh, this further on. Uh, this shows a high uncertainty. When you compute automatically a high uncertainty, it's a probable error. So uh, you can do this using uh, standard uh, binary entropy methods. And then you basically say the ones with the highest uncertainty, those are the ones that we want to correct. Okay. And this is how the methodology works. <clears throat> we have applied this methodology to the three uh, 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 structures that I showed you, the fetal body, the fetal brain, and the placenta. We started with a network with 13 scans. We trained it on nine scans, obtained results, and then in the second phase, we do 64 scans. And based on this, we can obtain very, very good results. Let me show you an example of how the benefit is. <clears throat> this is the correction of, a, uh, of slices. If you do the correction sequentially, <clears throat> you can reduce the error, sorry. <clears throat> you can <clears throat> reduce the error uh, by 100% if you examine all the slices. But we're interested in reaching the observer variability. So if you do it with the method I showed you, after, on average, 12% of the slices, the segmentation is good enough. If you do this in a sequential fashion, you need to see about a third of the slices. So that means that you can get a speed up of three times by using the method I showed. Okay. So currently we have applied this uh, to many uh, different protocols and structures and achieved very high results with a modest effort. A modest effort meaning we did not require the 1,000 hours of radiologist time. Uh, we required a few tens of hours, which is much more efficient. Okay, And then the clinical use, based on this, we were able to develop what's called development curves. What you see here is that, for the first time, we have now development curves for fetal MRI. Uh, it's usually done with ultrasound. We developed the first one for fetal uh, MRI. Okay, so this is called the bootstrapping protocol. Uh, we can also do self trading for protocol transfer. Uh, in MRI, with different machines and different protocols, it turns out that you train one network with one protocol, you try slightly different uh, uh, imaging protocol, and it doesn't really work. So you have to retrain the network and do the process. We have shown that you can do some transfer learning or self-training. And the idea here is that you use a network to predict the quality of the results and do the prioritization and do this automatically to select and uh, 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 correct and take out some of those who have a, a, a high variability. Okay, So based on this, we, have, we were able to do transfer learning uh, to a new type of protocol. Uh, we use this methodology also for linear measurements, uh, 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 the diameter of the brain and so on. But I will not uh, uh, go into the details. It's basically the same idea. Okay. So in summary, we're able to achieve a clinically useful results 
uh, that exceed the observer variability with a relatively small number of scans, annotated scans, and we have developed networks that are able to validate and correct the slices, learn how to correct and how to predict uh, areas in which we have high uncertainty. Uh, this way, we can prioritize the radiologist's time. And this is, of course, not possible without the radiologist in the loop. OK, so the take home messages here are the following. The classification task of structures and pathologies uh, in volumetric scan is very challenging and unique. And to do deep learning properly, you require high quality annotated data sets. High, high quality meaning validated by a clinical expert. And this is hard and expensive to obtain. We have described uh, what the bootstrapping approach is, the clinician in the loop, and how to do validation and correction of segmentations to optimize the radiologist's time and shorten this development time also to accommodate rare and unseen cases. And the, one of the most important messages here is that you need to quantify the observer variability because it changes according to the structures. What do I think will happen in the future? It goes back to this matrix I showed you. We are developing narrow intelligence that can be very effective for specific tasks. But uh, we have to take into account that uh, clinicians are not annotators, and this is not going to happen. I expect that the low-hanging fruits, meaning 10 to 20 conditions, will be picked uh, by a, a different organizations and institutions, or companies. But we need to develop the tools to accelerate and increase the coverage to all the other ones to which uh, uh, the development is not cost-effective. So uh, to, to finish, uh, all this work, of course, was performed with the team, uh, with the different projects, both here at the Hadassah Medical Center in Jerusalem, the Tel Aviv Suraski Medical Center, and these are the students with the uh, 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 help and participation of some of the companies. Uh, we, uh, this is what the uh, uh, group looks like. We were in pretty good shape uh, with the corona here. As you see here, all of us, uh, eating and, and uh, drinking together after uh, the third shot. Uh, I hope uh, we can do this in the very short future. Thank you uh, for your attention. I'll be happy to take questions. So thank you, Professor. I think it is one of the wonderful presentation Session. given by you. Session. So, thank you. Thank you. And uh, I think it's the best presentation, uh, best knowledge shared by uh, you in the field of radiology and whatever in the, in the medical sciences. That's so, very kind of you. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, Professor. So, I think uh, if uh, anyone anyone have the query uh, regarding any problem, you may ask the query from Hello, Professor Leo. Okay. They are free. Freely ask. Hello. Anyone? Participants, please. Yeah, yeah. Good afternoon, Good afternoon sir. sir. Hello. Hello. Sir, is there any future uh, extraction techniques? Uh, can you explain in radiologist how to extract the futures? Mm -hmm. So, if um, uh, the problem uh, is that even the radiologist can explain to you the features is let's take uh, the lung tumor. Uh, the extraction of the features, you have to talk to the radiologists and try to understand to code that. The idea of deep learning is that the features will be extracted automatically. And this is the great uh, advantage because sometimes it's very hard to formulate. In some cases, it's easy to say <coughs> what are the features, but in other cases, it's not easy to say. For example, a fracture, it's quite easy to say what are the features of a fracture. You don't really need a large fracture. You don't really need many examples to understand and find a fracture. But for subtle things like the tumors, small tumors, or the, or the contours of the fetal brain, it's very difficult to do that manually. This is why you use the network. 
So, okay, Professor, uh, one more doubt uh, from my side. Sure. Actually, I am working on the detection and tracking for the UAV dynamic object moving. So, one question related with that, if the suppose that I uh, lost you. Okay. Do you some disease? Some disease in the body. I, I'm moving. sorry. Uh, can you repeat? Because we lost you for about fifteen okay, seconds. Okay. 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 Actually, I am working in the area of the object detection and tracking, right? Okay. Using the deep learning and machine learning, especially in the UAV, you know, satellite images. So images okay. like images also occur in you know whatever from the tumor in the body. So can uh, we can uh, you know uh, make a bounding box or for the detection purpose, you know? Yes. So any any suitable method from your side can you suggest that the students can uh, draw the bounding box for the detection purpose? Uh, yes, by all means you can. Uh, uh, usually. I presented it as a single network, but it's a huge pipeline. You start with the image, you do normalization of uh, 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 gray values, you do normalization of uh, scale, uh, pixel or voxel size, and then you find a region of interest. You can also train a network to find a region of interest. The advantage is that it's much easier to draw a, a region of interest. This can be done uh, uh, by students, by uh, almost anyone, <coughs> uh, because you don't have to commit to the exact borders. And then you, once you find this region of interest, you can train a network to do this. And this is, in fact, what we do. The example I showed you about the fetal brain, it's, in fact, two networks, one that finds the region of the brain and then the other one that segments the brain. So absolutely. Yes, yes. Yes. So anyone, Himansu, want to ask any query because yes, yeah. working yes, in your area? Yes, sir. Yes. Uh, sir, what we generally saw uh, in uh, the case of transfer learning, the sample data set must be uh, similar to the original data set on which the data has, uh, network has been trained. Right. Uh, and, and what we see uh, is all the networks are trained on, uh, on ImageNet data sets. That's right. Uh, okay. But, uh, in the case of uh, disease detection, the data set is completely different from the original data set, but still in the uh, transfer learning performs very well. So <laughs> what what could be the main reason for this? This is my first question. Okay, thank <laughs> you. Uh, let me answer that. You're absolutely yeah. right. Uh, and try to use uh, AlexNet or ImageNet that has been trained on the natural images to do that. Uh, the problem that we have is that uh, we have 3D images, so uh, the structures, for example, the tumor, you really need 3D processing to distinguish a small tumor than a blood vessel because they have the same vessel. So the, the network strain on 2D images are not going to do very well on the 3D images, and there's really no way to do transfer learning from 2D to 3D, or at least not that we know easily. And second, the transfer learning is limited. Um, uh, usually, our experience is that to do the fine tuning and the precise segmentation, it's better to use uh, 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 your own data. And, and with this methodology, it's better to have fewer high quality uh, annotations than lots of them that are not from the field. So a lot of people are working on the transfer learning but it's not as easy as it sounds because it doesn't always lead to good results. But sir, uh, what I saw uh, most of in current scenario, that means in the COVID, many, paper, many researchers have claimed that uh, their network, which was trained on ImageNet dataset, performs very right. well in the detection of COVID-19 patients. So, <laughs> Okay, well, let's see what. Is this on 2D images or 3D images? On CT sir, or in X-ray images? So CT images, 2D images, they, they showed the results on CT images. Okay, if the, if the detection is a binary detection, there is or there is no COVID, okay? Is that what it was? It the does that what, what it yes, was? sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, okay, we have to see 
what else, what other data they, they added. If it's, it's, if it's a classification task, I've seen some of these papers, but some of them, what, when you say it's very good, it means what is the accuracy? What is the observer variability in that? And how the transfer learning was done. Okay, so I suspect that it's not just taking AlexNet and then uh, using it on CT images. I suspect there's a lot more around it uh, to be able to make it work. I'm not saying it's not useful. I'm just saying it's harder th than what it looks like. <laughs> okay, sir. Okay, sir. Uh, Thank you. Another question is, sir. Uh, sir, the as we know, the performance of all deep learning mod models depends upon the hyperparameters. Yes. Yes. Uh, apart from the data set, right? In uh, normal machine learning cases, since the network is very uh, low, uh, uh, size is very low, very less, we can easily auto tune them with the help of many optimization techniques, uh, grid right. search, CV, etc. But uh, in the case of deep learning, what we generally do is uh, we assign some hyperparameters, right? And on the basis of that, the model has to train itself so that it will give the output. But it is right. not always possible to assign these values uh, manually with a very good, uh, so that uh, very good answers, will, we can get very good results. So how can we auto-tune these deep learning models hyperparameters? Uh, or uh, we just go for hit and tile methods so that a result can... Uh, no, no, you, you are raising a very important question. You're absolutely right. Uh, the, uh, you usually set aside the validation set and the, the fine-tuning uh, could be done with some of that. It's still a trial and error method. I mean, uh, sometimes the network converges. You use different types of loss functions. Uh, it's still an art, not <laughs> not a science. And uh, I don't think it's based on mostly on experience and uh, trying a number of things to do a sort of a, a smart human search in that space. There are some techniques to do that, but I cannot point to you to one technique that is going to outperform and work well for a large variety of cases. So uh, this is still an issue on the research. Okay. Uh, sir, uh, my last question is, sir, uh, what we generally saw in uh, some standard networks like LXNet, ResNet, uh, after a certain level, people repeat the layers, so means... Uh, in first layer, if they go from 128 inputs to 256 uh, outputs, then in the second sub part, they go for 256 to 256 once again. So why uh, why they go for 256 to 256 once again? I was not able to understand why they do this. Okay, <laughs> um, you're right. There are a number of architectures. Uh, the ones I showed you are 3D architectures, not 2D ones. But even in the 2D ones, there are a number of uh, recurrent, uh, this is called a, a recurrent net, so that you repeat an operation because the input is different. So uh, you do some filtering and then it's like applying again and, uh, and again the same filter. So you, by repeating some of the layers, you're basically enhancing the learning of certain features. It, it creates some bias to a certain resolution for doing that. Uh, it sometimes uh, it has been shown to have some benefits uh, to do that. Sir, <coughs> is there any logic behind this? Suppose if I want to develop my own network, so after which layer I should repeat it? Is there any logic or yeah, it's a uh, hit and trial? <laughs> the logic is uh, is that you well, are going to enhance a feature. It's called a recurrent net. So that you, it's like when you do a loop, right? You do a kernel, you apply the filter, and then you apply yeah. it again and again. It 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 uh, it makes the differences more extreme, right? It sets apart, but it also has a bias. Now, there's no rule of thumb that says I would like to do that or not. There, are, the network I showed you in the presentation is called the 3D unit. There is a recurrent version of the 3D unit in which you feed it back. Um, it's it does slightly better, uh, uh, not significantly. How many times? It's a matter of try and error. Unfortunately, I cannot give you some guideline generally <laughs> okay, about sir. that. There is a lot of yeah. try and error involved in this. Right. Right. Uh, thank you, Professor. Thank you. Thank you.
thank you professor leo this side dr tarun uh, i keep bothering you if you remember and uh, we really appreciate your prompt response irrespective of time and uh, uh, really we are looking forward to have future nwvs with you some research collaborations and uh, some postdoc positions for our uh, you know the potential authors because uh, uh, the conferences are meant for developing networks not for only for the organizers as well as for the authors and you know the people who are uh, keenly working in, in your area uh, if you don't mind can we share your mail id to our uh, authors so that they can ask yes, yes. Uh, the queries or they can uh, just have interaction with you sure sure, sure. sure. i'll be glad to do that okay sir again uh, we would like to request you because you know in a moment just within 10 minutes we are going to start our validity session sure. where we will be announcing uh, you know certain awards so it will be a, our pleasure if uh, you will stay there for you know uh, for that validity session sure, and I'll, I'll be here yes okay sir. and the link will remain the same uh, till then uh, you can have a you know uh, just a break after 10 minutes we are going to start sir, on the same link okay. can can i just turn off the camera and sure sir sure sir sure sir Sure, okay, sir. Thank, thank you, thank you very much, much sir. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, thank you. Doctor Sri Jayakumar. Now we have Professor Asiri, uh, the chief guest of the day, with us, uh, sir. Uh, very good afternoon. Yeah, good afternoon, Doctor Tarun and your full team. And, uh, good afternoon, sir. This is Opi. Yeah, uh, yeah, Doctor Opi. Yeah, very good afternoon, sir. This is Doctor Anand Agarwal yeah. from Tripaladi Kota. Yeah, Agrawal sahab and uh, OPG and Dr. Tarun uh, is, I think, I can see the best trio. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, sir. It is, it is very, sir. very, 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 very good. Uh, nice to see you. I am also in the Golden Jubilee uh, event at uh, MBM Engineering College. is the Rajasthan's oldest college. Mm. And Dr. Ashwini Vaishnav, uh, Railway Minister, is from also here. Okay. Okay. So it is a very big and very old college established in 1944. Okay. So it's a golden jubilee of my father-in-law. So event is going on. All Vice Chancellor and uh, uh, very senior engineers, those who crossed the age 80 years, they are inside in the auditorium. And, uh, and I am I am here with you on mobile. So it, the picture uh, is not uh, important. I can turn off the camera, but your voice is clear, and I hope so. I am also audible. Audible and sir, looking smart. That is well. Yeah, you, so we you really see. appreciate your concern yeah. and you know the dedication towards uh, uh, the good. events. So he is the owner. Oh, good sir. The old one. So I, I will just tell uh, in my message also, the this type of vision is required. He is the uh, Seth Magni Ram Bhangad from Didwana. He has uh, given this vision to the academics. And what you people are doing, this is also in the same trail. Today, if you are igniting fire among the youth by providing the platform, then definitely it will pay after 20 years, 25 years and 30 years and whole nation will see how these technicians and experts and professors and uh, scholars, whosoever is attending your event, they will remember this linkage because you have just spoken to the Professor Leo. So you try to connect the Professor Leo with uh, all the attendees. So this type of approach is required and it is really a thought what you are giving to the industry. Which is, which is very, very important, Dr. Tarun, and full your team. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you so much, sir. And uh, we really, you know, uh, we always get inspired from you. And uh, today, you know, uh, with your kind permission, we are going to announce something for budding researchers because every day we are trying to, you know, get connected with the uh, uh, young researchers or the budding researchers to give them something extra. No, no, no. Good, 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 good. Look, see, yeah. see, platform banana. Bohot muskil hai or platform provide karwana is the real contribution in the academics. If I compare with uh, uh, some other universities and colleges and those who are having big name, but platform is not uh, that much easy. What you are giving, you have traveled from uh, hometown to this uh, place, Jaipur, and organizing all these events. 
so i had to leave jaipur uh, day before yesterday by midnight just to attend this event so i am very sorry for not physically present in your event dr tarun but uh, this is our responsibility and uh, you are contributing really nice with your all team trio you can say uh, sir sir it is first time uh, four organization mnit jaipur triple mm. it kota nit mm. jalandhar and sobe university mm. have get hmm. together and sir started this journey so sir hmm. ye sab sir aapka aashirwad hai no 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 my my, my good wishes sir. are my good wishes are always with you so bas sir aise bana rakhiye because dekhiye na your, your organization is young and uh, stem society is also a very young thing with young people and the whole nation knows how much young people can contribute now these days in the covid also we have seen how young people have given and controlled the situation whether it is in medical science or in all the disaster management uh, oxygen supply and the quick installation of the oxygen plant then government of india has given a special prize to the oxygen plant establishment team you know yes sir, yes, sir. all all the contribution of the young people dekho na covid se hum logo mein desh ke prati ऑर्गेनाइजेशन के प्रति और अपने काम के प्रति लगाव बढ़ा है घटा नहीं है सो दिस इज वेरी गुड पॉइंट डॉक्टर तरुण कोविड में लोगों का देखो ना जो लोग घर बैठे हैं नाउ दे आर मिसिंग कॉलेज एंड दो हैव नॉट अटेंडेड द लेबोरेटरी दे आर मिसिंग लैब्स करेक्ट सर तो आप देखो ना जो कभी किसी ने लैब को याद किया है कभी किसी ने क्लासरूम को याद किया है कभी किसी ने लेक्चर थिएटर ऑडिटोरियम को याद किया है बट ड्यूरिंग कोविड पीपल आर मिसिंग लोग याद कर रहे हैं Yes. So, uh, we must take this as an opportunity, or I think yeah. like this also tells the you know the students the importance of education, physical education, rather than going through you know. Mm. The teaching assistance is feasible and possible online, but for real uh, uh, knowledge, we have to meet physically. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, no, no, we will surely meet. Uh, I think uh, uh, this will be the. Uh, I cannot say last because the now academics will be in the hybrid mode hybrid always. Mode. बिकॉज जो आने वाले समय में कई एकेडमिशियंस ने कितनी मीटिंगे हुई है उसमें ये प्लान बनाया है कि 10 टू 15 परसेंट एकेडमिक्स मस्ट बी इन ऑनलाइन मोड क्विकली यू कैन कनेक्ट द जेरूसलम यूनिवर्सिटी हार्वर्ड यूनिवर्सिटी एंड एंड एनी यूनिवर्सिटी विद इन विद इन ए नोट ऑफ वन आर करेक्ट करेक्ट परमानेंट कॉम्पोनेंट यस इट विल बी दर्मानेंट कॉम्पोनेंट So yes, we sir. cannot say that we will close and shut down the online academics. It will be continue now. <laughs> yes, sir. It's a new oh, chapter. Yes, so uh, <laughs> you, uh, you will start in next five minutes, is it? No, within within two minutes, sir. Within two minutes, we are just waiting for one more professor from IIT Roorkee, and I think yeah, Dr. Yes. Manik, Professor Manik. Manik, ah, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. so good 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 excellent uh 83 year old professor mundra he has spoken in this auditorium today about the industry integration and he has also talked about the very good sir small 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 societies and organizations who can ignite the fire among the youth so i was missing i was missing you people and uh, that time i have decided i will convey this message uh, my in my today's uh, a brief to, uh, talk to the dr manik i think professor manik is with us yes sir good afternoon very good afternoon sir yeah professor manik namaskar uh, This is Dr. Aseri. Mic is muted. Mic is muted. Sir, your mic is mute. Namaskar, Professor Aseri. How are you? Fine, fine, fine. Dr. Manik, बहुत अच्छा लगा आपको देख के. Thank you. Thank you. आपको देख के बहुत अच्छा लग रहा है. And I see a background at the back, uh, at the yeah. back of you, which is probably your uh, yeah. just. Uh, yeah, actually, uh, actually, Manik ji, this is the MBM Engineering College. Uh, the oldest uh, engineering uh, college in rajasthan 
44 uh, onwards and uh, now the government has converted uh, this college into the university and uh, this is the now mbm engineering uh, university and the first vice chancellor is in auditorium so i have just taken uh, half an hour leave and now attending uh, this very important function uh, led by a very very young people and energetic people dr taron and uh, uh, dr op and uh, the young team agarwal ji also yes yeah. Sir, uh, uh, may I take the liberty to introduce one more guest, uh, Professor Leo uh, from the Hebrew University of Jerusalem, Israel. Mm. Uh, you know, uh, just before this session, uh, we were having a keynote from him, and he is going to join us for this validity session. If uh, you uh, people allow us, can we start uh, the validity session, please? Yeah, please go ahead. Please go ahead. So. Uh, a very warm good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Galaxy of intellectuals, invited guests, professors, students, and ladies and gentlemen. I, Dr. Tarun Kumar Sharma, it is a matter of immense pride to stand here before all of you in the session of Valedictory. On behalf of the organizing team, we are delighted to offer a gracious welcome to all of you. A pessimistic complaint about the wind, an optimistic tries to change it, and a leader adjusts the sails. The sails for this part is particular notion were adjusted by a person who is not only a great motivation to all of us, but a visionary, and the person who gave me the, brief, the belief to bring together this event. He is none other than my friend, Dr. Om Prakash Verma. Now, I would like to request Dr. Om Prakash Verma to highlight what has happened in the last three days. He is going to just have a look on the report for the last three days. May I request Dr. Umprakash Verma to please uh, read the report for the last three days. Uh, thank you, Dr. Tarun. So I'm Dr. Umprakash Verma from Department of Instrumentation and Control Engineering at NIT Jalandhar, and also the chair of this series, Sukta. I'm going to present the Sukta 2021 report that is held in last three days, 17 to 19 December 2021. This conference Sukta 2021 attracted more than 450 attendees, including participants, keynote speakers, guests, reviewer, etc. from approximately 12 countries across the globe, such as US, Germany, Australia, Denmark, Ghana, Saudi Arabia, it means all over the corner of the world. We have received more than 300 papers and abstract. However, our protocol says our, our organizing committee hardly entertain only the abstract. And that's why Sokta shows its, uh, you know, the gravity of the quality. So, and finally, 243 papers out of 300 papers. The full length paper has been submitted for the further processing. Out of 243 papers submitted, 92 were accepted conditionally for the publication in the conference. Proceeding of LNS Springer, Scopus indexed after adopting a rigorous blind peer reviewed policy. Out of these 92 papers, finally, 85 papers have been registered and approved by the committee in this conference for the possible publication. It is the 35%, it's over the 35% acceptance ratio. So this is the gravity, this is the quality we are going to maintain since last six years. Mm -hmm. Out of these 85 papers, almost all paper have been presented. So this is, this again shows the our quality from the different in the different 20 tracks we have created the 20 tracks and all the papers have been you know classified the tracks have been classified based on their domain okay so in last three days of this conference in these three days eight invited talks were included generally in the different conference we have seen we have we are uh, viewing mostly three to four uh, Plenary talks will be included. However, in this conference, 
we have organized eight invited talks not only from the you know australia uh, from the different six or seven countries so the highlight of this uh, topics subfields of the of the of the conference is the soft computing machine learning deep learning artificial intelligence and other formal models of learning from different eminent academician industries across the globe so the conference are further discussion session on the topics of particular interest to subscript the attendees the discussion topics covered empirical approaches to learning the sharing of the soft computing tools machine learning and program explanation based learning ga gnn medical and etc day one of the conference was started with the inaugural session and in which our chief guest was professor mp punia vice chairman aicte the patron of this conference was professor aps rathor co patron ma'am director mnit uh, jaipur co patron was the professor ak vyas coordinator triple it quota and also the professor vj janyani coordinator triple it quota co patron also the registrar of this uh, university mnit jaipur k r rahman k r niyaji sir we have a uh, guest of honor of this conference we are professor r k gar director in charge dr b r ambedkar nit jalandhar professor ranjit singh ji vice chancellor sobit university professor sayyad sidali mirjali mirjali professor and director center of ai research and optimization tore university australia mr navin kumar scientist d joint director ministry of electronics and information technology mr aninda bos executive editor springer nature and other my colleague my team so day one was started with the first plenary talk by mr aninda bos and who have given the lecture who have given deliver the lecture on the ethics for the publication then the plenary to talk to was delivered by our friend professor sidali mirzali on the deep learning tools then the third talk given by the professor rajesh kumar our uh, director raman uh, on the title of the pc gnn person correlation based graph neural network for human lower limb activity recognition then we have invited dr ali sadullah department of mechanical engineering university of science and culture tehran iran he was also the founder of the water cycle algorithm and different algorithms and he have given the insight of the water cycle algorithm that had developed in the 2012 then the professor ak khosla dean research and consultancy dr b r ambedkar university dr b r ambedkar nit jalandhar have delivered the lecture uh, the, uh, on the topic of the artificial intelligence in the healthcare and then on the last uh, you know uh, also we have arranged a workshop on the real time speech recognition using ann but unfortunately due to some unavoidable some circumstances uh, mr sachin has not uh, delivered okay uh, last uh, second last uh, or third last i can say the plenary talk 6 given delivered by the professor ratnajit bhattacharji iit guwahati on the topic of genetic algorithm application in antennas and today uh, we have the lecture of sri parmeswaran from australia he joined from australia university of new south wales and then in the last of the day uh, professor leo is here professor leo has delivered on the lecture of a title accelerating deep learning medical image analysis and the radiology so these are some you know highlights of this conference okay now based on the numerous request we are receiving from the authors and now we are i'm also discussed with the steering committee of this con uh, conference committee members and tarun uh, we are going to introduce or open the paper poster paper poster presentation session also from 2022 especially it is especially open for those who are they are the initial stages of the research and going to start their career in the in the in the, in the research publication or budding researchers you can say with the negligible fees with the negligible fees so that they can learn 
they can learn how to write the paper how to start the research in this area okay so or or we also decided all the presented graphical abstract, uh, abstract in the poster will be included in the book of abstract and also we have decided all the the whatever the fees above the negligible fee 500 or 600 will be bared by the stem research society so it is so it is a small announcement for the 2022 and next uh, announcement i think made by the dr tarun dr tarun hands over to you uh, thank you dr op for giving the beautiful insights of sopta 2022 what actually held in the last three days uh, really it was a hectic time for the organizers and uh, we hope the authors would have enjoyed and had some take away from the sessions of the eminent speakers you know around the globe nothing great will be achieved without great men and men are only great if they are determined to do so my esteemed colleagues we are happy to have with us professor gaurav manik from iit Rurki, the guest of honor may i request professor manik to share three words of wisdom before that i would like to introduce uh, dr manik it is my uh, profound privilege to introduce him Professor Manik is currently serving as an associate professor in the Department of Polymer and Process Engineering at IIT Roorkee since 2018. He joined IIT Roorkee in January 2013 as assistant professor in the same department. He holds a PhD from IIT Mumbai, MTech IIT Kanpur, and BTech HBTI Kanpur in chemical engineering. Prior to joining IIT Roorkee, he has served extensively in industry and academia like BITS Plani, BIT Chasi, totaling up his rich experience of 17 plus years. In industry, he is credited with creating and commercializing several innovative products and protecting IP through significant number of patents and record of inventions. His research interests include molecular modeling and simulations of polymers, materials, chemical process modeling and simulation development of novel and industrially significant polymer composites, coatings, sealants, and adhesives. He has more than 100 research publications in international peer-reviewed SCI journals, patent applications, conferences, and book chapters. He has significantly valued 41 publications in peer-reviewed chemical engineering and polymer journals of repute, such as Renewable and Sustainable Energy Reviews, Energy, Composite B Engineering, Polymer, to name a few, and holds six granted patents, patent applications of industrial commercial relevance, contributed 11 books, and made 41 conference publications. He has executed five research projects and supervised one postdoctoral, two PhD, seven are in process, 10 MTech students, and 23 BTech projects. In his department at IIT Roorkee, he has recorded among us, the highest average number of research, general publications, patent applications consistently in the last few years and maintain amongst the highest student appraisal score in teaching. We really appreciate you, sir. Among several awards received by him to disseminate professional knowledge and research, he has been awarded with the prestigious APAC level Tech Forum Contribution Award at 3M and secondment as visiting faculty sanctioned by the President of India for teaching at international platform at Asian Institute of Technology, Thailand, and VICAL award for best paper by Institute of Chemical Engineers, India. He has been invited as speaker, guest and session chair at several nation and international conferences and workshops in India and abroad. I also feel, uh, uh, you know, honored that he is on the Board of Directors in STEM Research Society. May I request Professor Gaurav Manik. Sir, you are muted. Sir, you are muted. Thank you, Tarun, for the kind words. Uh, I don't know how much do I deserve. You know, we are more like uh, Kota Sikkas, uh, which have somehow got uh, made illustrious by the kind words uh, of people like from people like you so i really appreciate uh, these words and um, to start with uh, professor gajendra aseri uh, uh, um, who's the provost and dean academics 
um, thankful for his uh, presence. Uh, Professor Leo Joskovics, uh, who's the head computer assisted surgery and uh, medical image processing laboratory in uh, Hebrew University of Jerusalem, Israel. Uh, Professor Liu, uh, thank you for being a part of this uh, uh, you know, validity session. And uh, uh, I, I missed your talk, which was a few minutes before, but I, I am very sure uh, people would have really uh, you know, uh, got enriched in knowledge uh, in the novel applications of uh, imaging that you're working at. And we thank you for your kind presence. Um, and the other dignitaries, thank you for your kind presence today. Um, uh, thanks to the organizers, Om Prakash Verma uh, from Dr. B.R. Ambedkar, uh, National Institute of Technology, uh, for all the hard work you've been doing associated with the SOCTA for quite a long time. Dr. Tarun Sharma, uh, who's uh, so bright uh, uh, you know, and uh, energetic uh, in not only in holding conferences, but in connecting and networking with people. So uh, thanks, Dr. Tarun. Um, from Shobit University, uh, really appreciate uh, your all the energy. My pleasure. Uh, Dr. Anand Agarwal, um, I, I'm, I'm sorry I've not uh, met you, but I can see you uh, uh, sitting next to Tarun. And uh, uh, probably if the chance permits, uh, we would uh, get to meet you as well. Uh, uh, Dr. Dr. Anand Agarwal from Triple IIT, uh, um, Kota. Uh, Thank you for all the support in making this a successful conference, uh, all the hard work that has gone behind the curtains. Uh, so, uh, and, and thank you participants for, you know, uh, uh, with all your energies putting in, uh, in writing the papers, abstracts, and then participating in the presentations uh, and, and making a successful presentation. So I, I think that uh, also deserves a lot of uh, praise. And uh, I'm told uh, just recently by Dr. Verma that uh, the conference organizers have done a great job in uh, you know, ensuring the quality of this presentation. Uh, out of, I presume, some 240 papers plus, uh, only about 80, 80 to 90 of them were finally screened through. So, uh, and, and uh, when you do such a job of just uh, letting 35% of the quality papers through, it is not only those uh, presenters and the audience who you know get enriched because they are just looking at the quality of uh, the research which has gone behind and uh, that work in screening out from 242 to 80 to 90 i think uh, there's a lot of background hard work which has gone in reviewing and uh, screening of the articles so uh, that that has really ensured quality from the organizers uh, with the prime focus of the world So you are muted again. Uh, okay. I think there is some uh, uh, something which is happening automatically. Okay. So uh, I was just saying that uh, with with the uh, you know future vision of the world and the world dynamics, uh, which is moving in the area of soft computing, uh, wherein not only novel algorithms are being searched, but uh, people are trying to explore new applications. A uh, uh, lot of these uh, uh, papers and presentations which happened in, uh, I, I presume, about 20 tracts uh, in, in this conference, uh, uh, several of them focused on novel applications, whether it was uh, supply chain, uh, you know, whether it was computer vision, whether it was, uh, you know, new sensors, whether it was security, uh, or whether it was, uh, you know, general deep learning, machine learning, data science, uh, you know, all those several aspects, I think, uh, have been touched uh, in, in this conference. So uh, I, I think uh, uh, drawing the maximum usage of these soft computing techniques and uh, showing what all can be done in the real life, uh, that makes this conference uh, uh, you know, a star performer in terms of uh, uh, bringing quality and uh, enriching knowledge uh, to the people at their doorsteps. So uh, uh, with with this, uh, I'm uh, really appreciative of the organizers and uh, the participants for coming in. I'm quite hopeful that with this number of attendees, uh, 450 plus that uh, Dr. Tarun mentioned, I think we should and we would be able to grow this number to at least twice in the uh, upcoming conference in 2022. 
so i wish the organizers uh, all the best uh, dr sanjay has been uh, dr anand has been quite a uh, support from the kota uh, team and uh, uh, i'm sure, i'm sure the next uh, i would not disclose the next upcoming uh, uh, team who's going to take it because that person is also very close to me and uh, somehow i would uh, leave it out to the organizers uh, this privilege of uh, you know opening up the uh, statement uh, of handover from uh, uh, kota team to the spu team. thank uh, thank you all of you for uh, you know such a remarkable conference uh, thank you sir uh, to plady kota love to work with you sir and yeah. we are surely work with you sir we thank definitely you. look forward to dr anand we definitely look thank forward. you thank you sir thank you, uh, thank you sir uh, your words were full of motivation and valuable uh, knowledge and we assure you we will work hard we will burn a midnight oil to uh, you know double this figure because uh, uh, you know karwa mujhe sir kehna nahi aata hai log judte gaye karwa banta gaya main bahut gand kaccha hu sir isme lekin definitely we assure you ki next time we will be having number of uh, uh, you know the papers because we are going to have new strategy we are going to uh, amend new strategies uh, with the consultation of you and professor seri definitely we are trying hard to you know attract uh, uh, more researchers into this conference thank you sir now uh, uh, today we to have the special invitee with us uh, professor leo uh, we requested him to stay uh, uh, for a while for our validity session to grace this occasion uh, before moving ahead i would like to introduce him because some of the authors have recently joined after their parallel trek professor leo is a professor at the school of computer science and engineering at the hebrew university of jerusalem israel he is the founder and director of the computer aided surgery and medical image processing laboratory professor leo is a fellow of the ieee asme and micai societies he is a recipient of 2010 morris e mula award for excellence in computer assisted surgery by the international society of computer aided orthopedic surgery and the 2007 k innovation award He has published over 250 technical works, including conference and general papers, book chapters, and editorials. He is a member of the board of directors of the MICCAI and CAOS International Societies, and has served on numerous related program committees. He is on the editorial board of six journals, including Medical Image Analysis, International Journal of Computer Aided Surgery, Computer Aided Surgery, and Nature Scientific Report. He is the co-chair of the MICCAI 2020 conference in Limu, Peru. May I request Professor Leo to grace us with his word of wisdom, please, sir? Thank you very much uh, for your very kind uh, introduction. Uh, I'm uh, happy uh, to be here with you. I praise you uh, for this effort. I think uh, it is an important uh, effort for uh, <coughs> encouraging. Uh, students and colleagues to widen their horizons and uh, strive to work uh, uh, hard and uh, get to high achievements. I also believe that uh, it is important to have uh, uh, also a global perspective. We have now uh, with the technology uh, possibility of me being with you. Uh, I would have. much more prefer to be with you in present and visit your uh, beautiful country and uh, uh, learn more about your universities and efforts uh, however uh, uh, this is a great opportunity for, to be here so uh, thank you very much for for the efforts i think it inspires uh, the youth and it inspires uh, uh, many people and the students to see that yes it is possible that uh, uh, you can uh, work hard uh, get interest and then expand your knowledge and uh, get great achievement so thank you very much and uh, uh, my best wishes uh, thank you professor leo uh, banking on us and we uh, request you to be the uh, you know mentor of uh, soft computing phase and application conference uh, uh, in the future we would like to request you to be the mentor of this conference So I, I can. I'll do my best uh, to help you. 
thank you thank you so much sir thank you so much i'm looking forward for future uh, associations now moving ahead the fragrance of flowers is spread only in the direction of the wind but the goodness of a person is spreads in all directions my colleagues we are delighted to have with us professor g k aseri as a honorable chief guest of the valedictory session i would like to request professor aseri for your kind words of wisdom professor aseri is currently provost dean academics and director inter uh, internal quality assurance cell of amity university rajasthan is having almost 18 years of experience in academic administration in higher education as subject expertise in microbiology he is heading amity institute of microbiological uh, microbial technology running phd ug and pg programs and research is well recognized by dst dbt birak icar icmr mofbi ministry of agriculture government of india in amity university he has served as director amity institute of biotechnology registrar deputy registrar dean academics director placements he has initiated academic reforms and as a chairman neck steering committee organized inspections successfully other than amity university he has worked as director institute of biomedical education and research at manglayatan university and faculty at lacho memorial college of science and technology affiliated to jay narayan vyas university jnvu jodhpur he has done his doctorate degree from icar central arid zone research institute in 2001 he had been received jrf and srf fellowships from csir ugc and icar cazri Professor Aseri has completed research projects funded by DST, Ministry of Agriculture, Ministry of Food Processing Industries (MO) FPI, Government of India. Besides guided PhD degrees, he has submitted two patents and published 62 research papers, presentations in international and national research journals. He has presented his work at Germany, Italy, Switzerland, Turkey, Egypt, Singapore, and Nepal. and organize international conferences in his subject area he has also designed and developed pg and ug programs in the area of microbiology and biotechnology msc industrial microbiology mtech biotechnology and bsc microbiology he has given consultancy to various food and beverage industries like bisleri kingfisher and sriram gums etc for their product development and quality control now may i request professor g k aseri for his words of wisdom thank you dr tarun uh, thank you very much for such a long uh, introduction i am the student of microbiology and my passion is uh, subject teaching and academic uh, administration as a facilitator in university amity university rajasthan so on behalf of uh, uh, the stem society i thanks to uh everybody who have presented the paper and uh, who are on the dais and uh, of the dais in in form of uh, the hybrid type of uh, academic uh, event so professor leo from israel and uh, professor manik uh, 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 from iit rurki for sharing uh, your thoughts on uh, this conference and uh, really this is the platform where we can uh, connect the youth with industries and uh, academicians and uh, really these uh, three people along with the full team and dr agrawal dr om prakash and dr tarun i have just said uh, the word trio it is really a very powerful trio uh, who have given the base to this uh, complete uh, organization and uh, in this event so continuously i am attending uh, all the events organized by this society and every uh, event by event uh, i could see very clearly how they are increasing the number of participants and more and more organizations and really it is a good uh, pathway where they are moving very fast and very rigid and constantly they are uh, developing the pillars and uh, moving because it is not a a very fast growth with slow base a weak base they are making a good base and since they are the engineers and they are the technology people so they are creating the good base and then building their uh, uh, society and connecting the people 
so i agree with uh, dr manik uh, the quality of the conference how they have collected the uh, papers and proposals and how they have screened nicely and then uh, uh, besides uh, uh, filtration they have also provided the guidance to the people this is the new step and then how they are now thinking for mentoring the new breed and uh, uh, financially also supporting uh, them which is i think a big stride in the academics and it's a big stride in the technology because uh, really connecting the people and giving the hand holding type of uh, guidance is a rare combination so i congratulate uh, to all you and uh, all the stakeholders even i think this is the perfect word stakeholders because all the participants and uh, the governing body including the manik sahab and uh, now professor leo and uh, those who have attended the inaugural session i was in traveling that day otherwise uh, i tried to connect but uh, due to the traveling i could not join so thank you dr karun it is really a very good point and as uh, i said academic administration is my passion so the universities colleges and all the organizations who are organizing this type of event and uh, there is a concept loop completion then definitely the loop completion is in our nation not only in india everywhere the research paper publication is the first step patent filing is the second step and then if you file the patent and then publish in the perfect way without uh, losing the uh, uh, internal uh, processing and uh, without disclosing the mechanism the so publication and patent submission is the step then the technology after the grant of the patent if you give it to industry then only the loop will be complete so i think our organization will work on this loop completion also which is highly required by the qs and the ranking so dr tarun uh, we have lot of academic organizations with us so uh, we will also give a special lecture and then a special workshop on the loop completion where they can connect the new researcher with the industry and then industry will take their technology and then complete the loop then they will get mileage in the university they will get mileage in finance they will also get mileage in all the way and our nation will be in the benefit so if i connect with the earlier problem brain drain and then all indian good scientists and engineers they were moving to us now it's a time for returning back so i have seen 100 plus people have joined the amity university from us itself itself us dr tarun only from us to amity 100 people are now they have joined few few of them joined and now remaining are joining in 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 before march they have selected so this is the good time to provide this type of platform again and again so i request on behalf of the stem society dr tarun please continue this journey it is the platform where you are igniting the fire among the youth i'm just using the word again and again you are igniting the fire by uh, by taking people like professor leo professor manik and all the plenary speakers and other speakers and they have provided the very good platform to our all stakeholders so again big thanks to you for inviting me and uh, a big thanks to all of you for organizing such a nice event and i have already covered few points in my early discussion with uh, when professor leo was finishing his lecture that the online and offline now uh, online definitely will continue 10 to 15% because very quickly we can connect with the international people and the national people also such india is a big country and the logistics takes lot of time so i think uh, dr manik will agree with me that very quickly with one hour notice we can uh, co connect the people from america to israel to india professor leo so we can uh, quickly uh, uh, prepare a galaxy and provide the academic contents to uh, the domain uh, workers so it will continue and definitely we will meet offline also because now covid is going to down and then uh, in 20 year 22 definitely we will meet dr tarun and uh, organize some events in the face to face mode also so thanks to your vision thanks to your uh, overall gist whatever you want you are doing 
you told me i think uh, nine month back in one of the conference that uh, we will organize the bigger event and then definitely this is the day a dream come true you have organized again a one more big event and please collect the diamond more and more more and more and definitely this organization will grow and then one day we can show how dr tarun dr op dr agrawal how they started uh, this organization from one room and now today is this is the organization where we can say the indias and asias and the continent and the global level organization stem thank you very much thank you very much sir thank you thank you so much sir uh, uh, we are learning under your able guidance and we assure you uh, we will never let you down uh, uh, professor manik and professor you because you are our real mentors and we are learning every day and we are trying to do uh, best uh, you know for uh, 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 to organize the events which are outcome based thank the you thank you uh, shall have something take away if they attend such kind of conferences because you know we do understand uh, because we are young researchers we too are the young researchers and we do understand the requirement of the researchers you know the problem they they face in their initial career so we are trying to map Uh, or you can say fill that gap you know uh, so every day we are learning and we are trying to improvise and uh, uh, definitely in the next uh, uh, conference uh, we hope that we all uh, could meet physically or uh, can can provide better platform can have networking uh, with the uh, speaker yeah you are on mute am i am audible yeah yeah audible audible very clear yeah. Audible. Please go. Please okay. go ahead. Please go. Ahead. So, uh, moving ahead, now it's uh, the time, much awaited time. Talent and skills are the crops that are nurtured, groomed, and given all possible opportunities to grow and bloom. This is a much awaited event in every conference and researcher's life, as it gives the returns to the efforts put in by them throughout their research endeavor. it is a moment full of joy a moment about pride and accomplishment a moment of celebration it gives a sense of responsibility towards fulfilling further commitments it fills the heart with mixed feelings fulfillment anxiety and eagerness following the tradition of sokta conference now is the time we acknowledge and encourage the talent by award distribution ceremony now i would like to request Dr. Om Prakash Verma to announce the awards in different categories. Thank you, Dr. Tarun. First of all, I want to announce that every paper is a good paper, whatever the authors have submitted in this conference. So, but uh, sake of this tradition of this conference, we are just maintaining. So, <clears throat> we have the five category, and after the A rigorous, you know, competition, and from the last three days, it is a very hectic for us, for the decision committee to decide which one paper we we have to announce uh, for the, uh, you know, for the award. <laughs> so finally, we have done some, you know, homework, and then the different category is the best student paper, best paper of this conference. best innovative conference paper best innovative student conference paper and the main knowledge frontier of knowledge sukta 2021 award and also one best thesis paper also we will announced in this so the paper id is 78 paper id is 78 author name is dev kumar singh chauhan and pandu r wandwili from iit bhuneswar the title of this paper is hybrid micro mci wonn forward kinematics estimator for the student platform the category of this award is best student paper so anyone from this paper id any one authors have joined dev kumar singh chauhan and pondu r wandwili paper id is announced the paper paper id yeah, is thank you very much sir i uh, okay you are here hello many congratulations yeah. dev can can you switch on your camera 
So then we can see your face. And uh, you can yeah, sure, get sure. the picture. Yeah, thank you so very much. So many, many congratulations, Dev Kumar Singh Chauhan. Yeah, thank you very much. The next award is under the best paper conference, best paper of this Sokta 2021. Paper ID is 117. Author's name is Prasant J. Affiliation is Instrumentation Engineering Department, Government Engineering of College Jalgaon. The title of this paper is The Enhanced Robotic Trajectory by Optimized Fractional Order Fuzzy Controller Using GWO ABC Algorithm. Any, the Prasant is here. Uh, good afternoon, sir. Uh, Prashant is not there, but I am co author Shirish. Okay, so many, many congratulations. Okay, okay, Thank, thanks a lot, sir. Thanks a lot. We will circulate, we will send the certificate very soon after this conference. It will highly take one or two days, not more than that. Then, yes, sir. thanks a lot. The next paper ID is paper, number, paper ID 99. Author name is Benedict House, Lenot Sefer, Jean Siang Yap, and Paolo Marciali from the Leofana University of Leonberg, Germany. The title of this paper is Soft Optimal Computing Method to Identify Roughness Surface in Manufacturing Using a Monolithic Regressor. This paper is awarded under the category of Best Innovative Conference Paper of Sokta 2021. Is any of the author is available? Joined? Paper ID 99. Paper ID 99. I think... A time difference. No, time is different. Due to the time difference, they have not joined. Okay. Next paper ID is 89. And the category is the best innovative student conference paper. The author is Chitra S. Srija S. And again, the university name is the College of Engineering Trivendram. College of Engineering Trivendram. The title of the paper is Implementation of ROS based mobile robots with few sort object detection using TensorFlow API. Any of the author from this? Any of the author have joined uh, in this category? Yes. yes. So many, many congratulations, Sista. Thank you, sir. Uh, Thank you. Is, it, is, is it feasible to uh, switch in your camera, please? Uh, yes. So that you can take a picture. Click a picture. If it is not, it's okay. Dr. Sarun. Yes, sir. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. So, so Dr. Sarun, uh, uh, I have one request uh, since I have taken leave from my uh, ongoing yes, program. No problem, sir. We do so, understand. So I hope so you understand. So uh, Manikji Please, and uh, uh, Professor Leo, uh, I need your uh, now kind consent for just uh, leave this group and join my ex ongoing program at, uh, you know, I'm in the university and the Golden Jubilee is going on for my father-in-law. So if you allow me, then I can leave. Please, sir, it was our honor uh, to have you on this occasion and I hope to see you soon in physical. Thank, thank you, you very thank much, you, sir. thank you, Dr. Tarun, Dr. Hopi, thank Dr. Agrawal, and Professor Leo and Manik Ji. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Professor Seri, for joining uh, in, yes. in such a situation yes, as yes, well. Yes. I have you. enjoyed, enjoyed. Thank you, thank you, thank and you. Thank you very much, congratulations to all the winners and uh, uh, best wishes for all the stakeholders for the next event. Uh, we will meet again very soon. Again, thank you. Definitely, sir. Okay. Thank it you, Dr. Tarun. Thank you, Opie. Thank you. It is going to be a wonderful destination which we are going to announce, and we'll request Professor Manik to announce that because you know, <laughs> because he is going to guide us for the next venue. Definitely, we'll request Professor Manik later on. Yes, 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 yes. Now I will talk to you just after this event. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Sir. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank Namaskar. You, Namaskar. Namaskar. Okay. So the next category of the award is Best STEM Research Society Paper Award. And uh, one more thing is here, we have not chosen the paper from the organizing committee. We have not given any award to the organizing committee papers. Okay, so the next category of the award is the Best SM Society Paper Award, and the paper ID is 149. The author name is P. Mano Sai, P. Dhana Sai, Baji S. Lakshmi, Tosib Khan Niyazi 
from the SRM University, Andhra Pradesh. The title of the paper is Exhaustive Search Approach to Place PV in Distributor Network from power, for Power Loss Minimization. So any of the author is here? Many, many congratulations. Any author? Any author of this paper? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm here, Manoj. Okay, many, many congratulations, Manoj. Yes, we will Thank complete, you. we will send the certificate very soon. Can okay, you sir. turn you on your camera? Sir, actually, I have some bandwidth okay, issue. No, no, problem. no problem. Just send your picture, we will post on the website. Okay, sir. Thank you. So, the Thank next you. award is the Frontier of Knowledge Sokta 2021 award, and it goes to the Ali Sadullah. Ali Sadullah is the founder the of Water Cycle Algorithm. Water Cycle Algorithm, and he is right now assistant professor in the Department of Mechanical Engineering, University of Science and Culture, Faculty of Engineering, Tehran, Iran. So Ali is not here due to the time. Again, next award is for the best PhD thesis, and I request to Dr. Tarun to announce this. Uh, I think the award, there were uh, seven PhDs uh, submitted for this award. And uh, after going through the PhDs, uh, a team was formulated who analyzed and evaluated on different parameters. And finally, four were selected for the peer review process. And in that peer review process, the major criteria was the quality of publication and the nature of the publication. Based upon that, only two PhDs move forward. And fortunately, only single PhD uh, uh, we are going to announce the best PhD uh, thesis of Conference SOFTA 2021. And this award goes to Dr. Ram Ratan from DRDO. He, uh, I really appreciate, he just retired in the age of 60 years. In the age of 60 years, he has completed his PhD. Scientist. I really appreciate uh, his motivation and the zeal to excel in the area of research. And he is the scientist G in DRDO. So uh, many congratulations, Dr. Ram Ratan. I think because of certain technical issues, technical glitches, he is not with us. But uh, uh, he is online, you know, telephonically, he is listening to me. So, uh, on behalf of the organizing team, I really appreciate and uh, request him to keep igniting this zeal and get associated with, uh, uh, you know, the young team of uh, SOKTA series. Many congratulations, uh, Dr. Ram Ratan. Now, moving ahead, the end of a story is a new beginning for many others. On this note, let's conclude a remarkable, memorable, and knowledgeable validatory session. On behalf of the organizing team and STEM Research Society, we sincerely thank the dignitaries for being with us and enlightened us with their enthusiastic remarks. I would like to convey my sincere thanks to His Excellency Governor of Rajasthan, Shri Kalraj Mishji, Honorable Chief Minister of Rajasthan, Shri Ashok Gehlojji, Chairman UGC, Professor D.P. Singh, Vice Chairman AICT, Dr. M.P. Punia, Secretary DST, Mr. Ravi Chandranji, Director MNIT and Mentor, Director Triple IT Kota, Professor A.P.S. Ratho, Director Dr. B.R. Ambedkar, NIT Jalender, Professor A.K. Gak, Vice Chancellor Gango, Professor Ranjit Singh, Mr. Aninda Bose, Executive Editor, Springer Nature, for their blessings in the form of a message for the book of FSEC and seven years. Thank you all. I thank all the keynote and invited speakers and the delegates for their enthusiastic participation in the conference. I sincerely thank the program committee, advisory committee for their valuable suggestions. I acknowledge the unwavering support received from the faculty and staff of Triple IT Quota. I would like to thank Mr. Aninda Bose, Executive Editor and Springer Nature Group for accepting our proposal for publishing proceedings in LNNS series indexed in Scopus.
I would like to thank all committee members for their continuous and extended support. I am thankful to the accounts department as well as the administration staff for providing all possible support towards organizing SOPTA 2021. I would like to thank the members of the media and the promotion team for manifesting interest in covering the event. I owe special gratitude to the non-teaching staff who worked hard to ensure that this occasion becomes a memorable success. To name a few, I would like to thank Mr. Shavan Nayak, Mr. Banne Singh Ji, Mr. Tej Ji, Mr. Pasab Ji, Prat Ji, and Sharma Ji. We are thankful to you because without your support, this team could have not delivered up to the mark. I'm very much thankful to Dr. Anand Agarwal, the organizing chair, to successfully organize SOPTA 2021. I can't miss to mention that he is a corona warrior and was having his son's first birthday on 17th December and he was completely involved and busy in organizing SOPTA 2021. His dedication is really admirable and appreciable. We wish a very happy birthday to his son and sorry for the belated birthday greetings. Thank you very much. <laughs> I would like to thank the reviewers, session chairs, and the authors of all the series till date, without whom support this journey would, would not have been possible, and looking forward for their contributions, support, suggestions, advices, feedback, time to time. My special thanks to the organizers, special session organizers, Dr. Deepak, Dr. Muskan Gar, Dr. Amit, Dr. Sonal Yadav, Dr. Priyanka Mishra, and, Ms. and Dr. Rohit Anand, finally, I extend our sincere and heartfelt thanks to the family members, uh, the family members of the organizing team, the speakers, the volunteers who are uh, highly engaged in uh, organizing this event. Uh, it will be my failure if I'm not going to uh, announce the name of uh, uh, Mr. Himanshu who is uh, behind the curtain handling all the sessions. He is, you know, long away in Dr. B.R. NIT Jalandhar, who is supporting this event. And uh, uh, Ms. Uh, Ismita uh, from NIT Jalandhar. Uh, uh, Dr. Jitain Rajprohit traveled, uh, you know, from Dehradun to this place. And Dr. Amit Hirawat, who is working, you know, day and night, uh, although he was engaged in uh, submitting his uh, final PhD thesis, but, you know, uh, because this shows the dedication, the zeal, and, the, you know, the team which we are having and working day and night to make the series possible and uh, 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 a wonderful series. And uh, we are, uh, from this platform, I take this liberty, and then uh, we are sorry to our family members because we have not spared the quality time with them, with our kids, but we promise you in the near future, uh, again, you know, this, this promise is not going to the fake like previous year, but we promise you definitely we will uh, take the time and uh, uh, stay with you, you know, rather than spending time in the, uh, 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 the research lab and in collaboration. And, but we expect the same, uh, you know, the support and the cooperation so that we can organize uh, you know, such events and can contribute in the nation building. Tarun, and, yes, Tarun, sorry to interrupt you, but I still doubt your statements. <laughs> 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 that, that, sir, definitely, you know, we again apologize and <laughs> but we will try, you know, we will try and we will try to optimize the efforts and can spare time with them. So uh, and I'm, I'm very humbly uh, humbled and honored to be one giving the vote of thanks in a such distinguished and intellectually uh, simulating gathering. We are uh, in the learning stage and I take all the sole responsibility of any inconvenience occurred during the conference. Success goes to my team and failure goes to me. If anybody is having any suggestions, feedback, you are free, you can unmute yourself, you can, uh, uh, you know, uh, open your camera and just give us, you know, feedback. May I request the authors, please, for their feedback? And any author, please? 
because your feedback is very important for us so that we can improvise next year the feedback may be the negative may be the positive <laughs> the negative feedback you also working for we are basically controller. working for the negative feedback because you know negative gives us energy and synergy to improvise well, yes. any any suggestions any critics please you are open to share with us okay uh, 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 we have just shared the link to uh, fill the feedback form we request to all the authors to all the authors be candid while filling the feedback form definitely will try to improvise ourselves now i would like to request dr sanjay and professor manik together to announce the next venue uh, for the sopta 2022 may I request uh, dr sanjay now may i request uh, uh, you know professor manik to announce sanjay, sanjay. San dr sanjay is with us dr sanjay sharma pleasure to see you you are muted i think uh, muted. sir unmute and yes please dr sanjay is going to be our next uh, organizing chair for the sokta series sokta 2022 may i request dr sanjay sharma to announce Your voice is muted. Your voice is not coming, sir. Your voice is not coming. I think some problem in the your mic. Just remove your you know mic, and uh, just tell from your laptop. Now unmute. मैं बोल देता नाउ यू आर ऑडिबल थाइंग आई थिंक कैन यू स्पीक यस सर मैं आई एम ऑडिबल नाउ यू आर ऑडिबल परफेक्टली यस प्लीज अनाउंस ओके फाइन uh so a uh, very good afternoon to all our uh, professor leo uh, and dr manik sir uh, from iit uh, rukki and uh, all the organizers dr tarun uh, dr op verma dr anand uh, first of all i congrats to all of you uh, to be uh, to be the completion of this uh, uh, 2000 sokta 2021 and right now i will de definitely very thankful to all of you that you have accepted our uh, proposal to host this uh, conference in university institute of technology himachal pradesh university in uh, year 2022 so especially thanks to all the organizers uh, for uh, taking our proposals and accepting our uh, proposal for 2022 and uh, with this i just want to give an idea about uh, this uh, himachal pradesh university situated uh, specially situated at summer hill shimla and it was established in year 1970 and uh, uit is the part of this university institute of technology shimla is also state government funded institute of himachal pradesh university shimla and formally this institute was known as the university institute of information technology uh, in year 2020 in year 2002 uh, only two branches was there uh, only computer science and uh, thereafter information technology but uh, in year 2018 more than three branches also merged in the, in it civil electrical and ec and most of the faculty are from nits and iits right now they are working with all the colleagues are working from iit nits and even uh, some of them are from abroad they have completed their phd or some but they are pdf 
so uh, as well as the uh, participant i invite all the participant of this uh, conference to visit the shimla especially as the shimla is the summer capital and beautiful place of uh, himachal and to visit this majestic and historic uh, hill stations uh, uh, you have to just 3 hours drive from uh, chandigarh you just take uh, air flight uh, um, there is a flight from delhi to jubalhatti shimla and uh, it's nearly 10 meter away from our institutes so these are the facility also available to drive this particular area and there is a train ride between kalka and shimla you can also enjoy this that particular ride especially for this particular beautiful place uh, in shimla so uh, as far as the concern of shimla shimla will be pretty cold in december or uh, you need to carry some uh, uh, proper winter gears or you can say in december it is expected a snowfall or uh, two snowfalls has been already occurred in shimla uh, in december right now in in present time so many tourists visit during december month uh, uh, especially for even new year celebration so you need to book your accommodation well in advance around june and july Uh, in my opinion so with this i welcomed in advance for all uh, sokta conference uh, organizers uh, manik sir leo sir and uh, other uh, uh, organizers who left uh, uh, some uh, i don't know the name of some uh, only three are known to me uh, dr tarun dr opi verma and dr anand and uh, uh, in uit shimla again uh, on the behalf of uit shimla again i thanks to the sokta founders for accepting our proposal i know um, i think so five or six uh, institutes uh, has uh, applied for uh, this particular uh, uh, proposal but uh, thank you for accepting us uh, so i really thank for this and i welcomed all in advance for 2022 thank you so much thank you so much thank you so much thank you, thank you, so much. Thank you. Thank you manish sir Thank, thank you, you so thank you dr sanjay look forward to meeting you yeah definitely we will meet in physical mode in 2022 in shimla yeah yeah we have been speaking over phone for quite a time now yeah <laughs> yeah thank you sir thank you thank you dr sharma for your proposal you know uh, what actually attracted the organizers because you know uh, in my vote of thanks i really said we hardly you know uh, spare time for our family members so we were looking for a venue where you know we can go with our family and yeah. they can enjoy and even we can enjoy for you know hosting such kind of uh, uh, the conferences so that you know yes. there is win win situation there is no win win situation and there would be no complaint from the family side we really appreciate your concern and we hope uh, that uh, you know you will start working towards sokta 2022 uh, yeah, uh, we will be having a is- online meeting soon uh, under the you know guidance of professor manik because again he is going to be the mentor Thank he is guide yes sir yes, definitely right. and sir just one thing is there uh, you have already uh, said that hum judte gaye karwa banta gaya and definitely i will put 101% for this and definitely is karwa ko hum aur aage badhayenge we will definitely move for and we will Thank not let you down uh, manik sir Thank, thank you. you thank you dr sanjay we really appreciate your concern at the dedication which really we are seeing virtually and we hope definitely ye karwa uh, chalega saalo saal chalega yeah. so uh, uh, sir uh, leo sir i would like to request you to be the part of you know as a speaker for shimla shimla is a uh, uh, wonderful destination you can uh, have the images you can google the images it is wonderful destination and uh, uh, we hope uh, the things will get settled the corona will you know Uh, uh wash out and will not having any uh, biological weapon uh, you know threats so we hope uh, in the next uh, next uh, you know the sokta 2022 you will be having with us definitely are going to be the mentor for sokta series forever and uh, we really appreciate your concern uh, your support round the clock and uh, uh, prompt reply you know this what i have learned from you irrespective of time difference you are extremely prompt and this is you know this is uh, the thing which we uh, young researchers we must take away from you we really appreciate you sir thank you so much thank you thank, thank you. you i believe uh, mutual mutual respect 
should be the basis of uh, human relations. So if you send me an M an, a message, I, I respect you by answering as appropriate. So thank you very much. Thank you so so much, sir. Thank you so much. With these words, uh, we would like to thank Dr. again Ramadan. to all. I think uh, uh, Dr. Ram Ratan is there. He has just joined. Dr. Ram Ratan, the best PhD award. So that you know the the others can see your face. Dr. Ram Ratan is there. Thank you very yes. much for giving this opportunity to present my work. So I oblige that I could not attend the full validity session. But uh, I actually be thankful you know, to especially to Dr. Tarun Kumarji and his team for giving this opportunity to present my thesis work. And uh, this organizing of this uh, international conference, SOCTA, is not a simple job. It is a very difficult job to, 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 to discuss with uh, the, the subject with all the international community and members to organize successful events. So I know Dr. Tarun Kumar since 2011, by, by on, when he organized this SOC in 2011. So since then, uh, we know everyone. So very thankful and congratulations for organizing successful this program. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Ram Ratan. Again, uh, many congratulations for the best PhD thesis award and looking forward to have, uh, you know, now, uh, uh, I, I invite you to be the, uh, you know, the, the member of the Sokta series. Okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, thank you. Thank you. With these words, anybody is there who is just uh, ready to give his or her feedback? Please, again, my humble submission and request. At least one. I think, uh, you know, either we have not done at par, we need to improvise ourselves. Or we have done, you know, everything in a order manner. <laughs> Thank you so much uh, uh, for sparing your quality time and looking forward to have more associations. Uh, with these words, uh, we are signing off. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so you. much. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, all of you. All the very, very best to the 2022 yeah. organizing team. We are certainly... Th Thank, you, Thank you so much. Thank you. And, and to everyone for your uh, contribution, support, and encouragement. Thank you. Thank you once again. Thank you. Thank you. I wish you all a very happy, prosperous, and healthy new year. And Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Merry Christmas. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.